Hello, welcome to Vet Med Corner. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to discuss why we should modify behavior for all animal species in the way that science has shown us is most ethical, kind, and works the best. So join me, you'll learn something. So when we are discussing behavior modification, it's important to remember that there are four quadrants, four different ways that we can modify behaviors. Now I'm not saying we should use all of them, just that there are four ways that it's possible. And we define these by reward and punishment. We also define it as adding and taking away. So for example, when you have positive reinforcement, that means that we are adding a reinforcer to increase the frequency that a behavior happens. When we have positive punishment, what that means is we are adding a punishment to decrease the likelihood that a behavior happens. We can also see that some people use negative reinforcement what happens in these situations is an aversive or something that the animal doesn't like is applied and that is maintained until the animal does the behavior that we are wanting. This is used a lot in horse training and it's also used for other species. You will see people push down on the back end of a dog trying to get the dog to sit. They will push on that dog until the dog sits and when the dog is sitting, they let go of the aversive. There are also people who will use positive punishment. And so what that means is adding something that the animal finds aversive after a behavior has occurred in order to reduce the frequency of that behavior. So for example, I'll see often a dog jumps up on someone, that person knees them in the chest, and the dog finds that aversive, painful, and so it reduces the frequency that they jump up on someone. People will also use shock collars, pinch collars, choke collars, prong collars. All of these fall under the positive punishment realm of training. And I'm not saying this is what we should be using, I'm just saying these are examples of how this type of behavior modification is applied. So let's go on to positive reinforcement as this is the quadrant of behavior modification that research has clearly definitively shown us is the most effective, is the safest, is the most ethical, and is the kindest to the learner. So let's delve with more detail into what that means. First, we need to consider who experts are. As we've discussed previously in this channel, when we are looking at and assessing information, we need to be considering who that information is coming from. And we need to be looking for consensus statements from experts in this field. Veterinary behaviorist is a veterinarian who has then gone on to do a specialized training in behavior and who have an in-depth understanding of behavior and how to modify it. They're doing research in it. They are also very well versed in appropriate prescription medications that can be used. So we should look to what veterinary behaviorists tell us about behavior modification. And they do have a position statement indicating that positive reinforcement is the way that we need to be modifying the behavior of all the animals that we interact with. There are also a ton of other organizations that put out position statements about positive reinforcement, including humane societies, SBCAs, and so on. And this goes for all species. These principles are not different if you are looking at training a horse, a dog, a cat, a bird, a human. And this is what is also being used for all of our zoo animals. And and so there is no reason to be saying, oh, but X species or X breed needs a heavy hand. Uh, this just isn't true. And the most predatory and aggressive species can successfully have behavior modification with positive reinforcement. 
All right, so the next reason why we recommend using positive reinforcement is because of the five freedoms that all animals should have. And included in there is the freedom from fear, stress, anxiety, and we have so many research studies that indicate that using the other quadrants of the behavior modification increase stress behaviors, fear behaviors, cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And when we use positive reinforcement, we don't see that. So using positive reinforcement is better for animal welfare. This is so important because I know that you want to do what's best for all of your pets. Another part of the five freedoms is that our animals are free to do species specific behaviors that are normal for them. And when we use positive reinforcement, this enables our dogs to communicate with us and it gives them the freedom to try things. When positive reinforcement is not used, we know that this suppresses behaviors. We also know that positive reinforcement is better to use because it's better for the animals. There was a study in 2014 that showed that using positive reinforcement makes our dogs happier. And the most likely explanation for this is what's now been termed the Eureka effect. And so when any species is trying to figure something out and then you get it, it feels so good. And it makes you want to keep trying things. It makes you want to keep learning. It keeps you engaged. And that reward is very fulfilling and fun. Um, I think about how I do the Wordle every day. I do this because trying something and then succeeding at it is rewarding and we can give that same sensation to our pets when we give them things that they can succeed at and reward them. And so because this is using the brain, this means that positive reinforcement training is excellent enrichment and that's part of why it's included in my video on canine and feline enrichment. I'll link both of them in the video description below in case you'd like more information. Using positive reinforcement is actually more successful than using everything else. We have studies that show animals that are taught with positive reinforcement check in with their people more, they are more mo motivated to change their behavior, they have more fun doing so, they bond better with their people, which is something we all want, they are less likely to have behavior problems like fear or anxiety or aggression. So if an animal has a history of rewards-based training, they learn to anticipate those rewards, which is likely part of the reason why this is so much more effective than any other type of training. Just all around a clear winner. There will be people who don't know how to properly modify behavior and they will say, but it didn't work for my dog and or cat or other animal. Um, but in reality, what's actually going on is that the person just doesn't have a proper training plan or proper proper mechanics or proper timing, a proper reinforcer, etc. You got to consider this a little bit like comparing yourself to a professional golfer. I am terrible at golf <laughs> and I can watch other people golf. I can read about it. I can do all of those things. And if I go to a golf course, I probably won't even hit the ball if I swing at it. Does that mean that what all of these experts are doing is wrong or doesn't work? No. The problem's with me. My timing, my mechanics, how I'm holding the golf club, where I'm standing, where I'm looking, everything matters. And it's the same with behavior modification for animals. Just because you watch someone else do it or you read about it does not mean that you then have the skills to successfully implement training plans on your own. So it's very important that you work with strictly positive reinforcement trainers in order to get appropriate training plans learn how to teach things to your pets in a way that's successful. They can also be a kind outside eye to help you with your timing, with your mechanics, with where you're placing your reward, with what you're using for reward, and so on. Another reason using positive reinforcement is wonderful is because it's fun. When you're working with any animal this way, you are working as a team and you're working together towards a goal and 
when the animal is enjoying it, that makes it fun for the human too. Because we want to give our pets the best things possible and we want them to like us and we want to like them. And when you're using positive reinforcement, it sets up the stage to be successful. And I also want to cover one last aspect. It's that positive reinforcement is the ethical way to approach behavior modification. And let's think about this critically here for a minute. Our animals are not born knowing what it is we want them to do. They don't speak our language. They don't use the same body language we do. When we're talking, all they hear is blah, 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 right? Um, it's our responsibility as the humans with the big brains to help them learn what it is we are looking for. Now, if you are not actually teaching them that behavior, this isn't ethical. If all you're doing is punishing them anytime they do anything else, this is frustrating for the learner, it causes pain, it ruins their welfare, it increases the likelihood of aggression, which means that safety is a concern if you're not using positive reinforcement. We must strive to show our animals what behavior we are looking for using positive reinforcement and management of the environment so that we prevent them from doing behaviors that are unsafe or undesirable, but that sets them up to be successful and to learn what it is we do want from them so that everybody can be as happy as possible. Next week, we are going to talk a little bit more about punishment and the fallout from using that type of training because unfortunately, there are a number of very popular people who use a lot of it. I hope you'll join me next Friday and uh, we will see you in the next video. Bye!